And Travis, what was it? What was the sentence for? What did you do? I was addicted to meth. So I had given somebody a ride to pick up pseudoephedrine pills that they were going to manufacture methamphetamine. Because I drove into the middle of a federal investigation, uh, it cost me 10 years of my life. I always told myself during that time, since I wasn't really buying them and they weren't really mine, that I had done enough wrong anyway in my addiction that I must be just doing time for the other things I did because uh, really it was just about something that traveled in my car for 20 minutes. Mm. So if there was a kid who was listening in today yeah. who's messing around with drugs, yeah. from marijuana all the way up to meth, what would you say? Stop. How? Stop. Well, first of all, you have to realize that the people, places, and things that you're around right now, mm -hmm. I know that this sounds cliche, but they're not the ones you should be around. You have to get connected to who you really are, and who you really are is not your addiction, and you're not your current associations. Quite often, we're feeling bad about ourselves. There's a root issue. I often believe that addiction is just a symptom of a deeper problem. Hmm. So not only stop, but talk to a counselor, talk to a friend, talk to your parents, talk to an aunt, talk to an uncle, talk to them about what you're feeling that's making you use and choose to involve yourself with people that can help lift you up. Because right now you're involved in people that are gonna drag you down and they're gonna keep you down there because misery loves company. I can tell you that when I went to prison, everybody that I thought that I would die for, I'm gonna die for my homies, you know, ride or die, these are my ride or dies. They never visited me once, they mm. never wrote me once, they never put money on my books. They only just wanted my company and their misery. So if I had drugs that they could use, then I was popular. If I didn't have drugs, then they were on to somebody else. So these are not really your friends. Hmm. You can find friends, and those true friends will lift you up because they're doing good things. You surround yourself with good people, you'll do good things. Cindy, what would you say to a parent whose child may be using drugs? Oh, Todd, I wish that I had, <clears throat> you know, some, some great wisdom to offer. Hmm. Um, that is my current situation um our our daughter uh is doing her third time in jail right now uh, for meth um she has been to bsu's for attempted suicide uh four different times she's been in jail three times she's been in a rehab twice um and to add to the mix of it all she is um, currently pregnant so mm. she's due September 2nd. Um, she's 20? She's 20, yeah. In jail and pregnant. Yeah, and you know, we have, I mean, we have <laughs> literally tried anything that we could possibly think of. We've involved, you know, our pastor and friends and any anyone that we could uh, reach out to and uh, tried to get her, you know, counseling after, you know, we've, we've gone through numerous therapists and they've tried medications and all kinds of things. Um, I don't have a good yeah. answer because I'm currently um, in the midst of struggling that. We are currently in the midst of, of struggling through that right now. And um, our daughter is an addict. I would, say, addict. I would say though, Cindy not only epitomizes unconditional love and dedication but she also epitomizes what's wrote on every journey 333 wall which is never give up so cindy may not have the answers but what she does is she keeps our family together just like what she described during my incarceration because she doesn't give up mm. she just keeps love and destiny through it and she believes that love conquers all she's said it many times and uh that is something that you deserve credit for. I know that we're still stuck in the struggle, but I believe that we will have the victory because of how you approach it.